acid and alkali in the body uh, is basically where does it all come from so diet is basically a mixture of acid and alkali then you have your so whatever you have in terms of food uh, provides acid and also provides alkali it's a source of that uh, cellular metabolism also uh, yields acid and alkali and uh, feces uh, basically is the the the, the source of the root where which you uh, uh, you excrete from most uh, almost all of the alkali that is uh, uh, either uh, acquired by the diet or produced in the metabolism okay so that's that's not the problem the problem is acid the acid that you make uh, that needs to be sorted out uh, and the whole acid base balance basically almost uh, in in the daily mundane basis looks at how acid is to be sorted out i'm not talking about the disorders i'm talking about the everyday life uh, so every day you produce a certain amount of acid which will uh, will will we call net acid uh, uh, and it needs to be excreted so nae net acid excretion is that one process that the body needs to invest in basically okay right so where does what comes from basically this is a very important slide so dietary stuffs is cho is basically carbohydrate uh, please remember this is not a standard abbreviation this is just i just wrote it to uh, 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 to decrease the word the word count of this slide because then it becomes very crowded so carbohydrate and fats basically when they are properly consumed properly metabolized they release or they produce carbon dioxide and water carbon dioxide as you may remember from your chemistry classes is called a volatile acid because you can well literally exhale it okay so uh, no problems there the respiratory system is used here to remove the volatile acid that is formed from carbohydrates and fats and water water is not a problem now other food item that is mainly protein these are basically these are three uh, main uh, dietary forms isn't it carbohydrate fats and proteins the proteins are different in the sense that they produce non volatile or fixed acid like hcl or sulfuric acid so it's this non volatile means you can't exhale it the respiratory system has nothing to do with this this needs to be sorted out by something else and we will we'll obviously we know what that something else is it's the kidney okay so non volatile acids are sorted out by kidney uh, bicarbonate that is formed that is also formed in metabolism plays a part in neutralizing these fixed acids that are formed however the main uh, source of uh, addressing this, uh, this these strong acids as i said is the kidney the kidney needs to sort this out uh, and this is the net acid secretion basically which uh, uh, is between 50 to 100 milliequivalents per day uh, for a person who eats a slightly more protein rich diet which is the case uh, uh, these days uh, in most part of the world unless the person concerned uh, that who we are considering is a vegetarian or a vegan uh, generally speaking non vegan and non vegetarian people uh, consume more proteins than other, other uh, uh, food groups and hence the net acid secretion uh, load uh, is about 50 to 100 uh, uh, milliequivalents per day okay um, now there are certain abnormalities of net acid secretion and these are the ones so what is common between diabetes mellitus which is basically the lack of insulin we are talking about type 1 hypoxia which by now you know is decrease in oxygen concentration uh, such that the body's tissues are deficient in oxygen and car car cardiac failure where there is a decrease in cardiac output so normally we have normal insulin secretion uh, where all the carbohydrates oops sorry all the carbohydrates when when you are when you're normal you're not diabetic all carbohydrates and fats are basically metabolized to produce carbon dioxide and water as i said carbon dioxide is exhaled not a problem however when a person develops di diabetes mellitus i.e insulin is lacking what you then have is carbohydrates now will be metabolized not into carbon dioxide and water rather they will be metabolized to 
keto acids. Now, keto acids are uh, another form of acids which you cannot exhale, so you have a problem now. Okay, so these keto acids, an example of it is beta hydroxybutyric acid, and these are the acids basically which add to the acidosis of diabetes. We call it diabetic keto acidosis. Okay, so diabetes is accompanied by a specific type of acidosis called diabetic ketoacidosis DKA. Okay, you will hear a lot of this in your medicine ward, uh, unfortunately. Uh, so basically in diabetes mellitus, you have this sort of problem, uh, this sort of abnormality, uh, which adds to your net acid load. So this, this, this chap will produce this anyway, because this is the normal load anyway. But in addition, uh, this, this person will also be producing uh, keto acids, which will add to the net acid load. All right. So that's one. What about hypoxia? So hypoxia, basically, you know, uh, there is an aerobic respiration, then there is anaerobic respiration. Aerobic respiration requires oxygen. Anaerobic uh, uh, respiration is switched into when you have lack of oxygen. And this is what happens in hypoxia. There is a lack of oxygen. The, the tissues have no choice but to switch, switch into anaerobic uh, respiration which has this side effect of producing other uh, fixed acids such as lactic acid and this that the other uh, again which are organic acids they are, cannot be exhaled out they're not volatile and that adds to the can add to the net acid load you may be familiar with vigorous exercise uh, causing pain in the muscles especially if you are not accustomed to that level of exercise and you suddenly end up doing it uh, uh, if, or commonly called as cramps. Uh, these are basically due to accumulation of lactic acid in the muscles. All right. And this is an acid and hence it needs to be sorted out. Okay. What about cardiac failure? So cardiac failure again is low cardiac, uh, low uh, cardiac output basically leads to a decrease in perfusion of the tissues. And this again has the same effect. The tissue will go into anaerobic uh, respiration and produce organic acids. Now, what is, the, what, is the, what is the solution for this? So in diabetes mellitus, give insulin. When insulin is present in the system, uh, carbo, car, carbohydrates naturally then switch back into conversion into carbon dioxide and water, problem solved. Uh, in hypoxia, restore the oxygen, carbo, uh, cardiac failure, uh, improve the cardiac output. So that tissue perfusion improves. When tissue perfusion improves, oxygen is there, oxygen, oxygen lack is addressed and hence the body switch, switches into aerobic respiration 